When she wakes up in a hotel room, Emily finds a dry body on the bed next to her. However, she doesn't look bothered and instead goes to check her body in the mirror, noticing the knife wound in her abdomen. The knife that caused it is nearby, and Emily just thinks about all the time she had to do this. Afterward, she proceeds to chop the body into pieces and put them in garbage bags to then take them to a barn. All the pieces are burnt down to get rid of the evidence and the ash is buried in a hole. Then Emily goes back to town and spends a few hours at a cafe learning more about herself, almost as if she didn't know what life she is in. Later at her home, Emily tries to keep her mind calm by smoking. Suddenly she is visited by her boyfriend James, who is very angry because she's been missing for three days and she hasn't answered his texts. He even called the cops to find her, and now he has to call them again to tell them she's fine. Knowing that the police will get her in trouble, Emily tries to calm down James by getting affectionate with him, but James turns her down and tries to call the cops again. A desperate Emily decides to stab him in the neck with a corkscrew, instantly killing him. Then she wraps his body up and hides it in the basement, followed by cleaning the floor and washing the clothes to get rid of the blood. She also takes a lot of medicine. The next morning, Emily is shocked to see that her body is rotting, which she didn't expect to happen this soon. Moments later, Detective Freddy shows up at her house and gets suspicious when he sees she came back without James telling him. He begins asking lots of questions, so Emily invites him to have some coffee. When he's distracted, she grabs Freddy's hand and starts absorbing his life. It turns out this isn't actually Emily, it's a shapeshifting being that kills other people to get their bodies. The creepy body from the hotel had been the real Emily, and now the shapeshifter has become Freddy, leaving the real cop's body dead and dry. He practices saying his name and checks out the gun, happy to be in a position of power this time. Afterward, Freddy uses a hammer to remove the teeth from the body so it can't be recognized, then he pours gasoline all over the house. On his way out, he bumps into a delivery man, so he takes the food without paying and leaves in the detective's car. The delivery man wants to stop him, but at that moment the house catches on fire. Next, Freddy goes to see the local dealers, who recognize him as the corrupt cop who always helps them out. He steals some happy powder and consumes it all in the car while it's revealed the creature needs medicine to stop the rotting and the happy powder helps delay it. Sometime later, Freddy goes to a bar and pats the dog at the entrance, who always recognizes him no matter what body he's wearing. He sits at the bar and asks for a drink for Julia, a lonely woman who is surprised that Freddy guessed her favorite drink. Freddy makes a joke about being a psychic, but in fact he comes to this bar all the time in different bodies and watches her come every night to drink alone. They start chatting and quickly hit it off, so they move to the alley behind the bar to kiss passionately. Suddenly Freddy feels pain in his abdomen and he panics, yelling at Julia to make her leave. Then he realizes this is the wound from Emily's body, which makes him worry because wounds have never body jumped along with him. While holding onto his wound, he walks down the street and uses his police badge to harass a couple in a car. Rachel is immediately kicked out but Freddy makes Sam stay to steal his body. Sam tries to defend himself, but the creature gets what he wants in the end. Afterward the new Sam takes the car to a private spot to destroy the body with a hammer, only to be interrupted by a call from his wife who asks him to come back. Sam goes home to his family, but he quickly learns that the couple doesn't get along and that their relationship is in shambles. The next morning, one of the kids wakes him up by jumping on him, and Sam can't help yelling at her to leave him alone. He's still feeling the pain of the wound, so he ignores his family and rushes to his office, where he discovers that Rachel is the receptionist. A memory from Sam reveals he had been harassing her and Rachel turned him down, so Freddy saved her just in time. Sam is a dentist, and since the creature has been in a dentist's body before, he goes ahead and continues to treat Sam's patients. During lunch break, Sam goes to a restaurant and is shocked to see Julia on the street. He runs out and tries to get a taxi to follow her, but the driver points out that it's stalking and refuses. Then he decides to distract himself by going to the movies alone. In the evening he has dinner with his family, but this only depresses him more because he can't remember his own family or anything from before he started jumping from body to body. He also keeps staring at the knives, feeling the urge to kill. Needing to drink to deal with his mood, Sam goes to the bar while ignoring his family's pleas. Julia sits next to him and remembers seeing him around with Rachel, so Sam shares that his marriage is a disaster and that he only wants to have some fun. In return, Julia reveals she used to have a husband and a son. The boy died from a severe illness when he was only three, and this strained her marriage for years. One night, her husband surprised her with a very romantic dinner, and they finally got to have fun and laugh again. They spent the night doing the dirty, but the next morning, Julia woke up to discover her husband disappeared without a trace. After sharing a drink with Julia, Sam goes to the bathroom and sees this body is starting to rot too. 
Panicking, he says goodbye to Julia and rushes to hide in a motel, where he consumes more happy powder. A few hours later, he gets agitated when he notices the rotting is spreading pretty fast, so he must hunt for a new body soon. He calls Rachel to apologize for what happened before asking her to come help him because he's sick. Moments later, Rachel shows up at the motel but Sam doesn't open the door, he just tells her to come in. Rachel gets wary when she sees the room has no lights on, and she very carefully approaches the bed, only for Sam to grab her and steal her body. For some reason, this time it hurts more than usual. The new Rachel stares at the dry body on the bed and takes more medicine, realizing she has access to lots of it. At that moment she gets a call from her boyfriend and she has to make an excuse for why she left in the middle of the night. In the morning, Rachel takes the chopped body and bags to the barn again to burn it down and hide it. However this time she is seen by a neighbor, who asks if Rachel knows anything about the barn's owner and points out she always smells something funny in around here. It's implied the creature took the owner's body before and already discarded it. Rachel immediately drives away without saying a single word and goes back to the dentist's office, where she uses her employee key to steal a bunch of medicine. Afterward she goes to her apartment and takes medicine pretty often, hoping it'll keep the rot at bay. In the evening, she decides to dress up nicely and go to the bar, unaware that her boyfriend Tommy sees her leave. After the dog welcomes her again, she sits next to Julia, who recognizes her as Sam's date. They chat for a while and Julia comments that Rachel has sad eyes so she offers her business card, explaining she's a counselor and can lend an ear any time. After Julia leaves to talk to Robert, John takes over her seat and begins hitting on Rachel. At first she ignores him, wanting to spy on Julia to know what her relationship with Robert is. However at that moment the TV shows her as the main suspect behind a case in the barn. Needing to escape, she accepts John's advances and leaves for her apartment with him. They share some happy powder and John tries getting dirty with her, but when Rachel turns him down, he gets too aggressive and tries to force things. Rachel pushes him off and rushes to grab a knife to attack him, but John is quick to defend himself and disarms her. Then Rachel breaks a bottle on his head and tackles him to the ground, so now John can grab the knife. He tries attacking her, only for Rachel to beat him down with a lamp and retrieve the knife. After getting stabbed once, John tries to run downstairs, but Rachel follows him and proceeds to stab him multiple times in the corridor. Then she returns to the apartment and grabs all the things she needs to escape. On her way out, she discovers a neighbor is calling the police, so she hurries to run away only to be seen by the cops outside. Luckily she runs faster and takes a hidden alley to find an old garage where she spends the night hidden. The next morning, she wakes up to find the dog sleeping next to her and her skin already rotting. There are also multiple lost calls from her boyfriend Tommy, who suddenly shows up at the garage because he tracked her phone. He wants to know the meaning behind her portrait on the news, so Rachel hits him with a bat and runs away. Tommy tries following her, but Rachel hides in the back of the truck while feeling the pain in her abdomen again. She needs a new body soon but doesn't want to take Tommy's because the cops will investigate him while looking for her. Thinking he doesn't have much time left, Rachel goes to the address on the business card to find Julia and tell her the truth. However she finds her meeting with Robert, which makes her very jealous. The rotting on her arm is starting to expel pus, which inspires her to stalk Robert instead of Julia. She follows him to his house and pretends to be the delivery, killing Robert for his body as soon as he opens the door. Afterward, Robert makes a phone call and confesses his feelings to Julia, who agrees to come to his place for dinner. That night, they enjoy each other's company and Julia admits that there's something very familiar about Robert, but she can't explain what. Robert flirts with her and kisses her, quickly escalating things into something naughtier. Their touching causes Julia to discover the wound on Robert's abdomen, but he asks her to ignore it and they spend a night full of passion. From then on, Julia and Robert start a relationship, and they're very happy together. They go on dates, have fun, and get dirty whenever they feel like it. Robert finally has what he wants and doesn't feel the need to search for a new host, although he does go back to take care of the last body and throws it in the river. He also keeps on taking medicine. One morning, Julia sees the news about six deaths in town and realizes she's met all those people at the bar. Robert hugs her to comfort her, promising to protect her. That night, Robert sees rotting on his hand and suddenly has pain in the abdomen again, so he finally accepts he must confess the truth. Robert tells Julia they need to talk and shares his earliest memory. When he was a child back in 1954, he killed his mother by accidentally taking over her body. He doesn't know what he is or if there are others like him, but he does remember feeling his mother's pure love in her body. Since then he's been jumping from body to body but he never felt a love so pure again until the day he took over the body of Julia's husband. That romantic night had actually been prepared by him, and he had hated having to leave her the next morning. 
Almost every day after that he returned to the bar in different bodies to try to connect with her again. At first Julia doesn't believe him, but when he mentions the details of the romantic night she has a breakdown and takes a taser from her bag. Robert swears he loves her and won't hurt her, however Julia is too scared and tases him down before punching him a couple of times. Desperate to survive, Robert touches her and steals her body. The fact she's killed the woman she loves leaves her devastated and she goes to the bar for a drink, where she thanks the barman for always being there for her. That night, Julia doesn't body jump and lets the rotting take over her body. To her surprise, instead of dying her power creates a nasty cocoon in which she stays all night. In the morning, the creature breaks the cocoon as if it was an animal's birth and rushes to the mirror to see an old man covered in wounds, assuming this must be the real him. He doesn't understand what this means, but he goes to the park to think, and he's soon joined by the dog. 